So this next step here is going to be to attach hook hangers and the connector. And the way that we do this is I use 30 minute slow cure BSI, Bob Smith Industries epoxy. It's a two part epoxy. And the way that I do this is I take a little lid here. I like to buy the uh, local like craft brewery type beers and these are the lids that come from the beer and I just keep all those sometimes I'll ask the guys at the liquor stores if they have extras and they have tons of them so I just take them and I snip them off and I use these little lids just take a little tiny bit of this epoxy and let it run down a little bit Oops, I should have did that first so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this epoxy and mix just a little bit together like a one two count there Make sure those are about the same exact size piles. Sometimes I'll, I'll take my little scale and I'll measure out the stuff to make sure it's exactly right. What I'm going to do here is I'm just taking a plastic bristled brush, clipping this guy off. Keep this part for later. I use the back side of this because it's nice and bendy. You can get in there and when you're mixing this stuff, you can kind of get down. Let's get this stuff in the mix for about 30 seconds, a little bit longer. And we'll be ready to go. So I'm just going to take some of this and get it in the hole. And I'll take the stick and I'll just kind of push it down in there a little bit. Sometimes you can shove the stick in there. I've used toothpicks before and the toothpick broke off inside the hole on me, so that's why I use these end of this plastic brush just kind of get a lot in there we'll take one of the hook hangers I'll make sure it's nice and coated all the way around completely coated stick that guy in there and I'm gonna look at this guy how did I put these in they're straight up and down that's how I have this Trying to match this bait as close as I can. When that epoxy sets, sometimes I'll take my finger and just go around it like this. Then it'll push it down in that hole. This epoxy, the good thing about it, is you can touch it with your fingers and it does not like burn your skin or anything like that. Actually, it'll just get a little sticky or tacky. But besides that, this it's really doesn't do anything to your skin. So we're going to leave that guy sitting just like that. I'll put this hook hanger in after this guy sets up in about a half an hour. It's going to take a little while. So now we got this hole here on the back. I'm just going to fill this guy up nice and goopy with that. And sometimes these cuts aren't that smooth. So I'll just take some of that epoxy and smooth out these cuts so I don't have to go back and sand them or anything. It just saves me time in the long run. It doesn't really change the weight of the bait or anything. It's just a little tiny smooth layer in between the baits to keep it nice and smooth, I guess you say. And I'll take that small little guy in the back, coat it up nice and good. That guy put in there. About where I need it. All right, everyone. I have my uh, lead pot heated up, and uh, gonna pour these couple of holes right here. Should go pretty quick. Make sure this thing is tripping. I should have my mask on and gloves and everything, but I don't right now. Gonna smoke a little bit because of the wood. Typical. And, uh, haven't had one actually catch fire on me yet. Uh, knock on wood. But anyways, I'll let this guy sit here. 
I'm going to unplug my uh, lead pot. I just kind of put these pieces of wood around it to keep the lead from splashing out and everywhere. <laughs> that burning wood actually smells pretty good. <laughs> Anyways, I try to get it to come up a little bit out and over the top. Then I come back with my razor knife and I just take the razor knife and kind of score it until it's flat. Which will do that once this cools off. Then I'll come back and I will hit it with some baking soda and super glue. Right, so I'll show you guys this little trick real quick. I just use an old, uh, use an old little blade. Get a little tiny dip of the baking soda. Just kind of drip it on top. Take that blade and smooth it over. And you'll see where it goes into the spots. It's not flat. Just take that extra and brush off anything that's around it. Pretty simple little process. And then just keep this super glue. As soon as it hits it, it ends some bonds. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of like smoke come off of it. Now it'll be hard as a rock. You can come back and just sand it a little bit. Pretty simple little trick. Alright everyone, so I got the lead poured and then I smoothed it out. I took my razor blade, came back, made that thing all nice and smooth. Put some uh, baking soda and some super glue in there. Yeah, that stuff instantly hardens. Came back with my ruler and a square, and I marked out where the eyes go. And the next step here is going to be drilling out these eyes and then uh, sanding them and getting them a little bit smooth. So let's move on to that step. All right, everyone. So I got my uh, box of drill bits here. Got my bait ready. I got the drill bit hooked into the drill and this is my grandpa's old drill and his old drill bits and stuff so it's pretty cool to uh, make some stuff with my grandpa's old things he used to make little like uh, Christmas ornaments and little trains and stuff with like connector pieces like this and they all had like uh, little cabooses and like different train cars and stuff they were pretty cool little wooden little things that he used to make so anyways let's get to drilling out these eyeballs here and then we're going to sand them out and get them smooth. I've done this a few times so I know how to do it. If I had a press it would be a lot easier but I guess to say you have to eyeball it. Sides a little bit deeper than that one. I gotta just get that top out a little bit right there. Do that, I just lean the drill a little bit to the side here. Clean that guy up and there you have it. Now I just gotta come back with some sandpaper, possibly the Dremel, and just round these edges down. It's one side. We'll come back with some sandpaper and hit it and get a little bit smoother too. Alright, so I got the eye kind of smoothed out. 
and as you can see I got some baking soda in the eye I took my finger or actually I took the blade first I just had a little blade I stick this there so I can just scoop use this as a scoop put it in there I took my finger kind of smoothed it around got it in the eye hole and all that stuff made it nice and smooth and now what I'll do is I'll just hit it with the uh, the super glue and it will instantly bond it Sometimes you see a little bit of like smoke come off of it. Crazy. Just let it soak in. Just got a little piece of sandpaper, 100 grit. Just take my thumb with that. Just kind of round that out. Make sure it's all smooth, put a little chunk in there. And come back. Raise your blade and just smooth down that little bit of a chunk right there. This one spot I see. The rest of it looks pretty good. Doesn't take much, just a little nice sand to get it all smooth. That's about it. Right, everyone, so I got to this point. I got all my airbrush stuff out here now. And I am ready to throw a white base on this guy and get to uh, painting it. So, got all my colors here. And I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do on this guy. I might do a bluegill pattern on it. Alright guys, we got the white base down, and the next step is going to be putting some silver on the bottom part of this bait, and then getting to throwing some more colors up on here, getting this thing to look like a bluegill bait. Come back and hit that with some heat with the air dryer, hair dryer, and uh, hit it with some heat. Heat set that paint, do another coat of silver on there. I like to put sometimes two or three coats of silver on the bait. Get it nice and done. Next color to throw in here is a little bit of fluorescent yellow. Let it get a little splatty so it goes down on the on the other sides. I kind of open the brush up a little bit as I'm I just kind of do this as I'm going with the brush and it kind of splats it a little more than being like solid with, with the sprays. I like it to kind of get splatty. So let's move on to the next color. The next color is going to be um, bright green. And where is it? Opaque green. No, I think I'm going to throw that one on there. Alright, so I put that green on there. I think it's a little bit heavy, 
and I kind of took out some of the fluorescent. So I'm going to go back and put some fluorescent on here, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently than I normally would. And I think I'm going to wrap this with uh, some material that I have here, just to give it like a little scale pattern on that side, give it a little more depth. All right, so I just got the one side kind of set up to go, and I'm going to spray it just a little bit of that fluorescent right here. Just to give a little bit more of a pattern on the side. So we got a little pattern there if you can see that. Different, a little more depth. All right, so we got it to this point. Now we're going to wrap it with some other material, Ooh, which is going to be this stuff. You can get this stuff at fabric store by the yard. And we're just going to wrap this guy. I'm going to use these clips. I'm going to clip it up. Use the little alligator clips to get packs of these. All right, so we got the bait wrapped now, and I am going to now use detail sepia, Createx color detail sepia, and we're going to throw some on the back of this and on the sides. <laughs> I'm learning to not go so heavy with the sepia on the sides because I'm always taking away a lot of the color and stuff on the side and especially on the top. So you just want to barely hit it with that sepia just enough to get a little bit of a dark on there. Not too much. I know the lighting's not the greatest back here and we got the fires going on still. It's kind of smoky, so bear with me. kind of the basics of it all if I don't drop it just kind of gets that color going on there I don't know that looks pretty good I think I might almost leave that I might toss a little bit of color up here on the top I'm not sure we'll see. all right not quite sure what I was thinking there I forgot to film that part so what I did was I came on the top, I wrapped this just a little bit, came on the top with some pearlized purple, and then I went at an angle <clears throat> with some pearlized green. I hit the purple straight down and I hit the pearlized green at an angle this way. That way when you peel it, it kind of gets a uh, weird texture to it. And just something different to it. Break up the monotony of just that black on top, or I mean the uh, sepia. Just a little more colors, kind of gives it like a scalish looking. All right, so now I have wrapped it with a different, a third material here. So far, I've used this bigger laundry basket type material, stuff you can get at the fabric store, and this was an old part of a tent, <laughs> like the uh, mesh part of a tent. And the tent was getting thrown away, and I was like, hey, I'm going to use that for material. So anyways, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to hit it with some pearlized white. Give it a little, uh, uh, a little more pop. So I hit this guy with the hair dryer and take all these clips off. This part is sometimes a pain in the butt. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. So I still got that color, but then turn it, that pearlized. 
dominates. Purple on top. Some of that green almost makes it look gold. Crazy looking pattern. All right, so I'm gonna throw some pearlized tangerine on the belly here. Since we're doing a bluegill pattern. Hit that guy with some heat. Okay, wrap this. Didn't really wrap it too much. I didn't want to get extreme with it. Not bad. Just got that pearlized and that orange. All right. The next step. Got a couple little stencils cut out, and I'm seeing which one fits better on here. Trying to see which one would fit a little better. That's not too bad. I like it right at the top of the eye there. I think I might use that one. This one's a little bit too tall. Yeah, we're going to use this one. Alrighty here. So we got this far. We got gill plate put on there on both sides. And uh, the next step here is going to be uh, I think I'm going to put the eyeballs on this guy, and then I'm going to come back with acrylics or the actual airbrush paint and just use a uh, grab it here. I've got two different ones. I got two different paint brushes that I use. I use this bigger one for uh, covering big areas and I use this little tiny guy that I cut some of the bristles and it's just a little tiny guy so I can like do my detail lines around this and I can sign the baits and everything with this little tiny paintbrush all right everyone so the next step here is going to be putting these eyes on the bait with some gorilla glue that I got it is the gel gorilla glue you either use the super glue or gorilla glue but use the gel and you are putting eyes on it nice amount on the back of the eyeball there quick here so we'll throw some white <clears throat> with the paintbrush so got some white on there now we're gonna just put a little dab of red right there on the outside of this gill plate and just go so slightly put some red doesn't have to be perfect I like to make my lines a little wiggly sometimes but wait just uh doesn't look so boring I guess to say with just straight lines it gives it a little more character Fade out there as it comes. We will hit the other side just the same. Get those sides done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with some black here on my bigger brush. Kind of a lot on there. We got a little bit of a spot right here where I just think it needs a little bit of black to tone it out. So I'm just going to. black 
That's something different. Every time I paint one of these baits, I do a little bit different paint job on them. Sometimes I try to match stuff, but for the most part, I try to just go with weird random patterns on these baits. Where you might get too much, you can always go back over it with some other color. It's a little bit of black on there. I'm going to come back with some blue. I'm put some blue right here on the uh, gill plates, and then I'm going to sign it and all that stuff. Try something a little different. Got a little bit of the fast black, fast back green. A little bit of this color shift. Blue. Kind of mixed them together there. Just take a little tiny bit on the brush. Make sure there's not too much on the brush. And just come right along here and just give a little bit of some blue. Cool. And that little dot there. Always make it white first, that way it pops a little bit more. I might have to come back with some white. Fix that up a little bit. But besides that, that's just about it. Alright, we got it to this point, and now what I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to take some dragonfly glaze and uh, put it on the top and part of the sides of this guy. Put a little on the back there and then just uh, work it around. Try to stay outside of that gill plate area. Come down the side just a bit. Get this inside here. This stuff looks white when it first goes on. But as it dries, it dries completely clear. This just gives another added layer of uh, texture, color, some pop. It's got some blues and some purples in it. Pretty cool stuff. And then see how I accidentally got too much black on there? When I come back with this dragonfly glaze, it just kind of takes away that dark, dark black there. That's just about that. Once this dries and I put the clear coat on it, you'll actually see that it's got that color and it's got some purple, some silver, some blue, some green, some pretty cool stuff. Dragonfly folk art. Alrighty everyone, getting to the last steps of this bait and I got it up on my turner which I'm not going to turn this bait because of the images or the uh, sections and it will move and stick in the epoxy. I've been watching some uh, Marlin bait videos again and I noticed what he's been doing is he paints both sides and epoxy coats them and then sticks the pieces together last. I think I'm going to start doing that. I mean, 
it seems a lot more smarter and it'll keep the uh, pieces from sticking to each other as they are drying. So we will get to uh, doing this guy here with some uh, Bob Smith to part epoxy. Let's do this. Alrighty, so I have some plastic bristled brushes and I take two of them and I tape them, tape them together so I got more of a working area. I got two bristles there, or uh, two ends. I can get more of the epoxy loaded up onto the brush. I use these plastic bristle brushes because they, uh, they just seem to work easier and I can toss them out when I'm done. So anyways, we will get to uh, epoxy coating this guy real quick. I'm going to go ahead and just grab my head mount for this because it's uh, kind of hard to get a good angle on this unless I had somebody else like filming for me or something. Just get a nice even coat of this stuff. Start in one spot. Just work your way around the bait. So I went ahead and I just epoxy coated the whole thing because I had enough mixed up and I was able to do it. You want to get this thing sitting to where it's not touching itself. In the future I won't do it this way, I'll do it that way. But I got it all epoxy coated. And a little trick to this, a lot of times around those eyes and sometimes in some of these spots, the stuff will like to run and kind of goop on you and that's why you want to put it on the turner. But I'm not going to turn this, like I said, because this thing will stick to itself. I made this guy, it's just a disco ball turner, and uh, I made it a couple pieces of wood, a couple dollar uh, disco ball turner online, and I use this for like my crankbaits and stuff to spin them. But since I'm not spinning anything, I'm just going to do it like this. And what I do is I come back with the brush once in a while, and the stuff will want to goop up, so I just come back with the brush, and I just scoop out any of those spots that are just a little bit too thick or if it tries to pull up on the bottom down here I'll just hit it a little bit but I coated it just about perfect all right everyone bait is dry I went back and I cleaned up the eye holes and everything with a uh, razor blade it's all nice and dry the next step here I went and I marked out the holes for the jitterbug lip. Just take my screws. I marked the holes and uh, I took the screws before I put the lip on and I screwed them like halfway in just so I could make sure that they will hold. Screw this in. We have it, ladies and gentlemen. Get a whip on there. And, uh, the next step would be to put some hooks on it and uh, drill out. Got to drill out the holes for the tail and put the tail. On. holes now I'll come back with the bigger drill bit and hit just one side on each of these now for this one I'm not gonna pour a tail I've poured so many tails and when I do them it takes so long to do it would take too long for the video so I'm just gonna go grab a tail and a couple of toothpicks and stick the tail on all right everyone went inside grab super glue grab your toothpicks and we've got the tail here. What I'm going to do is I'll just take a little tiny dab of super glue. You don't want to get it too wet. A little tiny dab of super glue in there. Make sure the tail's the right way. Shove that tail in there. So, this is a drill that 
bigger on this side and smaller on that side. The toothpick is not going to come out on this side. Just the tip of the toothpick will stick into the smaller side. So we got one in. Take the other one, stick it on the other side, and then I will clip these guys off. Smooth them off. Just to take my razor blade, I'll go around them, but that time I just snapped them off. They don't have to be perfect. Try to get some light on this thing for you guys. See it. I guess I can go out front with it. It's not much light that I carry here. Anyways, put the tail on there and ready to go. And uh, I'll show you guys some swimming action of the other one that looks exactly like this. So here's what the bait looks like swimming in the water. Now, this guy. I'm doing a build at home. I just put out a video of the build. And uh, I'm going to see if this guy even works. Because if it doesn't, I'm going to be bummed. This guy works. Just got to impart the action on it. I mean, it really, really gets going if you impart the action on it. That's pretty cool. Test them all out. See if they work.